Welcome to the EOB podcast, where we talk about the weekend box office and the new openings this week. I am Ben No, and uh, unfortunately, Sen won't be able to join us this week because you know he's busy with other things. So it's just going to be me, and um, as always, since I'm the only one talking, this week's podcast is going to be uh, relatively short compared to uh, our regularly scheduled one with both of us uh, speaking. So we have four wide releases last weekend, anchored by Fantastic Beasts. And where to find them? That is the spin-off of the Harry Potter movies that's directed by David Yates and scripted by J.K. Rowling herself. And then there is the teen coming of age movie, The Edge of Seventeen, which uh, stars uh, Haley Steinfeld and uh, Woody Harrelson, Kendra Sedgwick, and others. And then there is Bleed for This, as kind of boxing movie with Miles Teller, you know, as a boxer who injured his neck in an accident. Uh, he was driving a lot. You know, you know, his career was on the ups and ups, and then he injured himself. Then his career took a downturn because of that, his injury, and he has to recover. You know, people were telling him that he would never box again. He shouldn't box again because of the fear of that any boxing would shorten his life. Really, you know, because like he severed his spine. And he is in this contraction, which causes him pain with any movement. And you know, there is a long road to recovery. And I believe that he eventually did. Maybe I don't know. You have to see the movie. And then there is、uh, Ang Lee's Billy Ann's Long Time Walk. It actually opened on the 11th of、uh, November. You know, to take advantage during the Memorial Day weekend, and will and then it, it expanded wide. So let's get going. Okay. The movie that took the top spot last weekend was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. As expected, this is the spinoff of the Harry Potter movie,、uh, written by J.K. Rowling about Newt Scamander. I, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, and uh, you know he has all these beasts in a suitcase, and he released them, and now he has to、um, go out and、uh, catch them, <laughs> and it's causing havoc with the world. I mean, before this is actually a prequel,、uh, a spinoff slash prequel. You know, it's like I, I think it takes place、uh, in the Harry Potter universe, but you know, years before Harry Potter. The movie stars、uh, Eddie Redmayne and Samantha Morton, John Bolt, Ron Perlman, and others.、Uh, directed by David Yates. And you know this is the first movie in a Plan Five movies franchise. Yeah, it's one book, and they decided to kick off a new franchise with this since the Harry Potter、uh, story is over. Now they're doing a new franchise with Fantastic Beasts, with Eddie Redmayne as the main character. Supposedly, this is just a book, right? And and unlike other movies, right, where they split a book into se- several parts, the subsequent movies are going to be original、um, stories. If it's five, then yeah, they make sense because you know it's not just one book split into five separate pieces. Initially, I thought it was going to be three movies, but now they're expanding it to five. So it came into number one. It pulled in about seventy-five million over the weekend, which is kind of like one of the lower. Uh, lowest maybe、uh, Harry Potter movies,、uh, even though it's a spinoff, it's not a, a direct sequel. It's a spinoff. We were bullish. Both Sen and I were saying, you know, this movie could pull in 90 million. Sen said it could do 90 to 100 million or more. We say that 90 is a conservative take、uh, because it has the franchise、um, Harry Potter behind it. You know, people who、uh, miss the world, the, the Harry Potter world, will return to see it. It's not、uh, about children.、Uh, it's this is more adult. I I could probably grab、uh, in more people, but apparently not. Apparently not, which suggests that that、uh, you know people might、uh, not have a connection to this story as much as the Harry Potter franchise. The production budget is 180 million. 75 million is pretty decent, but I think Warner Brothers is expecting more because is it good enough to launch a franchise? Yeah, I think it's good enough to launch a franchise. You know, because seventy-five million, ninety is even better. But you know, this is the first movie, and it's it's kind of sort of an unknown quantity. Even though there is sort of a built-in audience because of the tie-in to the Harry Potter movies. I mean, prognosticators,、uh, box office analysts, etc., are saying, why is it so low?、Um, if not ninety, it would probably do eighty, right, or eighty eighty million plus. But Uh, who knows? For some reason, people might not c- connect with this one. Maybe because it's not based on Harry Potter. I mean, I mean, it doesn't have Harry Potter in it, right? And this is more、uh, of an adult take because it's、uh, it's starring adults instead of children. 
is new and Eddie Remain, you know, is his biggest movie ever opening, probably biggest movie, uh, you know, in his career. Um, it's, it's not bad. I mean, we're talking about Eddie Remain here, right? <laughs> but Fantastic Beast, it's kind of a, a, a huge deal in itself. People know knows about Friends, Fantastic Beast because it is based on the Harry Potter universe. It takes place in the Harry Potter universe, and supposedly the second movie might take place in Hogsworth. To have some tie-in, so that might do better. But 75 million kickoff for the first movie in a potential huge uh, franchise is good. I, I think you know 180 million production budget. It could be more. You know, there's advertising involved. I mean, could double that. The worldwide take is uh, right now is 220 million, uh, with 145 million of that coming overseas. So this is the first weekend. So we'll see if uh, it carries on. Uh, Fantastic Beast skews older. Those audience don't usually rush out in the first weekend to watch it. They go over time. So it still has a long way to go. There's Thanksgiving and then Christmas. So when it's all said and done, it could be profitable for Warner Brothers. But we have to see the second weekend, how that will go. Okay, coming in number two is a Doctor Strange. It pulled in about... 17.7 .7 million over the weekend. That is the third weekend. Domestic gross right now is 181 million. And worldwide, it's at 575 million. So, as we said in the previous podcast, for a movie that takes a detour from the usual Marvel stuff, right? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a new character people usually don't know. People don't usually know who Doctor Strange is, you know, like this general audience, but they know that it's, it's from Marvel and Marvel has built up such a good brand that, um, you know, they don't care uh, who these characters are. They just uh, want to be entertained and they know what they're getting with this is that they're going to see some good stuff. And Doctor Strange is holding up quite well. It's dropped. 59% roughly because uh, you know it kind of targets the same uh, audience as Fantastic Beasts you know it's a huge movie so that's why we're seeing when there's a huge movie like Fantastic Beasts entering the ring with the other movies you see these huge drop-offs and we're seeing that with Doctor Strange right now coming in number three is Trolls uh, it put in about 17.5 uh, million which is almost neck and neck uh, with uh, Doctor Strange and this is a movie that's from Fox you know Spy Dreamworks um, we didn't have high hopes for but it's holding up quite well right now the domestic total right now after three weekends is 116 million uh, worldwide is uh, 264 million and the budget is 125 million uh, which is kind of high but it's kind of like on the po powerful course for uh, DreamWorks it seems like it's gonna do well we're gonna see a sequel sometimes okay number four is Arrival the movie kind of disappoints uh, at least to me I was thinking that this movie might be this year's The Martian right I had to say it could open uh, to 50 million or higher but it didn't uh, it pulled in about 11.8 million it opened to about 25 million the production budget is about 47 uh, which is still a pretty good opening for a movie that only costs that much so it's a success in that sense and as we can see the drop off is in you know 51% because of Fantastic Beast is such a huge movie that it kind of uh, sucked the box office from the other movies in theaters so uh, in two weeks it pulled in about 43 million uh, so it's nearing its production budget and uh, the worldwide take right now is uh, at 54 million but uh, you know it hasn't opened that wide overseas yet this is a movie that we'll be keeping an eye on you know we could see some you know awards talk in the effects or whatever for this movie but uh, we don't know yet okay coming in number five is almost christmas It's a you know one of these uh, comedies targeted toward the african-american audience and you know it's about this hodgepodge of different personalities coming or trying to survive the holidays because their patriarch matriarch whatever call them together uh you know trying to get along and you know they're adult children they have their differences and hopefully they could put those aside long enough to have a good reunion to have a good dinner which they probably will so that movie uh, pulled in about 70 million over the weekend so in the second weekend it's uh, made 25 million so far on a production budget of, uh, of 17 million so it is doing well doing well it's, it's one of these movies that's gonna hold up over the holiday season and then number six is Hacksaw Ridge, another movie that's holding up well. It has the lowest drop-off of the movies in the top 10. Uh, it pulled in 6.7 million. Uh, drop-off is only about 36.5 million. Uh, you know, it is that uh, war movie. 
uh, directed by uh, Mel Gibson, stars Andrew Garfield about a soldier who uh, who refuses to carry a gun on the battlefield, refuses to kill. He run out in the battlefield, see who's injured, and pull them back in and get their get their medical help. This movie is holding up quite well, maybe because of. Uh, uh, again, like I said, uh, this is a uh, faith-based movie with a military element to it. So it appeals to that crowd, the religious military uh, crowd. Uh, it hasn't opened overseas yet, so the domestic growth stands at 42. And you can say, you know, uh, Mel Gibson has been out of Hollywood for a while because of the stuff that he said back then. He pissed off some people he shouldn't, and uh, I guess this is kind of a, a return for him. Uh, uh, he's making movies again, and you know this is sort of an, uh, an acceptance of him back into the fold, uh, so to speak. So uh, we'll see more from uh, Mel Gibson. I mean, he was a pretty huge before as an actor, a director, um, producer, right? Now he's back. You know, they're letting him back in again. Axel Rich is his uh, comeback movie. Coming in number 7 is one of the new releases over the weekend, The Edge of 17, the teen comedy released by STX. Uh, it pulled in about 4.8 million. Uh, let's see, I had the movie to open at around 3, which is roughly there. Uh, Sen say, you know, it could do 10 to 12 mainly because he couldn't get a good read on these type of movies, you know, movies that's not targeted toward him. Based on his past experiences with these movies, he was wrong, so he's betting big on this one just because. You know, I say three because there's this movie called Fantastic Beasts and where to find them in theaters. And, uh, you know, a movie like The Edge of Seventeen probably couldn't get enough separation from, uh, you know, that movie because it sort of targets the same crowd. Teens. <laughs> Even though Fantastic Beasts turned older, it's still uh, a movie that's targeted at teens. And Edge of Seventeen it has great reviews about... Um, 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, A- minus cinema score, so reviews are good from people who saw it. Critics liked it, and I guess prognosticators are saying this movie could do better if it's not open against Fantastic Beasts, because Fantastic Beasts will suck up everything. You know, once you have a, a movie like that. And other people could say, hey, it's good counter-programming. Because there's Fantastic Beasts and, you know, for people who might want to see something else, The Edge of Seventeen is a good choice. Because, I, like I said in the previous podcast, The Edge of Seventeen is the second most interesting movie uh, of the new releases. And it kind of performed where I had it because, hey, Fantastic Beasts. Maybe, like the critics were saying, it's targeting the same crowd. But it did a little bit better, 4.8 million. I said about three, roughly the same. This is one of these movies which is kind of a, a critical hit, but commercially uh, probably not gonna get much notoriety. You know, one of these uh, movies people might quote and say, hey, you gotta watch it. But, you know, it's a drama coming age tale and in a sea of these big uh, movies, it's gonna get lost. Right now, I don't think there is ever a good time to release these type of movies. Maybe it'll find life on, you know, home video, or etc. Right? The budget is only around nine million, so it's just doing okay. You know, four million opening. So, like I say, this movie is probably gonna find life on, on uh, home video, or you know, might get a, an awards bump later on. Coming in number eight is another new release. Bleed for this it stars Miles Teller, as I said in the intro, as a boxer who whose career is ticking off. But then he got into a car accident and he injured his spine. Uh, you know he had to wear this neck brace to allow the bones to heal. And people tell him to quit boxing, but that's the stuff that he kn knows. You know he couldn't do anything else, and he started his comeback. It also stars Aaron Eckhart as well, and as well as Katie Segal. So. I said the movie would probably pull in about 3 cents at 5. You know, it's kind of relatively well reviewed, 64% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, A minus cinema score. But as I say, you know, it's one of these movies that kind of like an indie to me. And there's this other movies, Doctor Strange's in theaters, Fantastic Beasts, Trolls, and so on and so on. And it's one of these movies that people just throw out there. It's an indie movie as it would make three million uh, and did about just that kind of 2.3 million. So Mouse Teller is good and this is one of these uh, dramas that is well regarded. But how commercial is this as we discover not that commercial. And then number nine, The Accountant, Ben Affleck's movie pulling about 2.1 million over the weekend in the sixth weekend. Uh, domestic growth so far is 81 million. And worldwide is at 138 million, which is pretty good for a movie that only costs 44 million to make. So good for Ben Affleck, good for uh, the director Kevin O'Connor. Rounding out the top 10 is the horror movie Shut In. 
it dropped 56 uh, percent pulled in 1.6 million in the uh, second weekend so as we said in uh, last podcast you know it's a generic horror movie starring Naomi Watts probably too generic for people it's just kind of like throw in the sea of other movies more interesting movies and it's, uh, again uh, one of these movies that, that got lost uh, it's just a genre movie for people who want something different from the big blockbusters and of note is Moonlight continued to impress it came in number 11 and pulled in 1.5 million this is a movie that is on the awards uh, watch uh, so far the domestic growth is uh, 6.7 million in, in its fifth weekend of release already it's continued to expand into more theaters we're hearing good things about it buzz is building for this movie like but like i say how commercial will this be we'll never know we'll see okay another movie of note is billy lynn's long halftime walk it expanded in its second weekend uh, it was released on uh, about veterans day weekend it's ang lee's return to hollywood filmmaking and the movie only pulled in about 930 k in over a thousand locations which is not good um i said that it could probably do about 1 million since it's five and it seems like i was right kind of uh, right on the money right there because because in our preview of the movie you know we talk a lot about the tech aspects ang lee filmed this movie in 120 frames per second but other than that there's nothing there to recommend about this movie it stars Garrett Hunden, but like, like I said, he's not a, a person that people would turn out for. It has Vin Diesel, it has Steve Martin, Christian Stewart, Chris Tucker, but these people are kind of like um, not the main people. You know, they're not the main actors, they're supporting actors, and they're probably in it because of a, of a favor for Ang Lee or their producers themselves. Reviews were poor, 43% on Rotten Tomatoes. I didn't expect a lot of things with this movie, and it seemed like this is the uh, a certified bomb for Ang Lee. No one wants to watch Billy Lynn's uh, long halftime walk. And I don't think it's gonna get any expansion after this. And there goes his award chances if there, you know, was any. Alright, so that's it for the top 10. Let's move on to the new releases. Again, we have four wide releases. The studios are stuffing the theaters again with all these movies. We have. Moana, I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. It's Disney's new animation featuring the voices of The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. There's Bad Santa 2, the sequel to, uh, you know, that R-rated comedy. Uh, Rules Don't Apply is directed by Warren Beatty, you know, him starring as uh, Howard Hughes. And then there is Ally, the Brad Pitt and um, Marion Cotillard uh, movie. Uh, this is a period drama that takes place during World War II. Okay, so let's start off with what I think to be the biggest movie of the coming weekend. I think it's going to be Moana. It's the animation by uh, Disney. It features the voices of Dwayne The Rock Johnson and others. (laughs) But the biggest name is uh, Dwayne Johnson. So he plays an island god and it takes place in uh, Hawaii or something like that. Surprisingly, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is good at the box office and good for the box office. His movie generally does pretty well. And Disney, despite their track record before, is actually on the up and up. They're more like Pixar now instead of the Disney of old. So they're taking more risk with their animation, their stories. And Moana is one of them. And how well would this one do though? Remember, we still have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It targets this sort of the same crowd. We still have Doctor Strange. It's still a, a, a huge movie. Uh, then there's Trolls as well. In come Moana, Disney, trying to take uh, some of the pie from all these movies. Is it going to beat out Fantastic Beasts? Assuming Fantastic Beasts holds up, right? Maybe with even with a 50% drop off, it could pull it in in the 30s, mid 30s, right? For Moana to beat out Fantastic Beasts, it's going to have to have a 40 plus opening, right? What do you think? Zootopia is another Disney original animation. It opened to 75 million, but that movie opened in March, probably a less crowded a space. That one featured cute furry animals. This one, not as much. So how do you think it's going to do? Is, is Dwayne The Rock Johnson brand going to carry this one forward? or not or is it going to have a t- typical Dwayne the Rock Johnson opening those are the questions there's Disney and the Disney brand and then there's Dwayne Johnson just his voice all these big movies and it's coming into the ring 
it's coming to say, hey, you know, I'm here. I'm going to take a piece of the pie from Doctor Strange. I'm going to take a piece of pie from Fantastic Beasts. Trolls, I'm going to take some from you as well. Uh, so how is it going to open? It doesn't have the cute furry characters. That's, that's only my only concern. But again, it's Disney. They know how to advertise. And they are going to advertise. So the movie currently has uh, 100% at Rotten Tomatoes. Reviews are going to be there for this movie. I mean, it might drop as uh, it gets closer to the release date. But right now, it's currently at 100% with 32 reviews. Moana versus Fantastic Beasts. Fantastic Beast has a 75 million opening. What do you think? All right, how about this? Fantastic Beast has this big brand name behind it, right? Uh, Harry Potter spinoff takes place in the Harry Potter universe. That only pulled in 75 million. Moana has Disney behind it. It's Disney animation, which I said is on the up and up. They're on par with Pixar in terms of animation stories, story-wise. But this is a new property by Disney. It's kind of different about an island god and a young girl on their adventure. My gut says it's not going to be as popular as Utopia. But then again, you know, like this, this is the family crowd, the audience might not be as popular, like I said. So how about this? Because of all the other movies in theaters. Um, it's going to do 55 million three days and maybe 65 million five days. But it's going to have legs. It's going to stay in theaters. Okay, the second biggest movie is probably Bad Santa 2. It's the sequel to the 2003 R-rated comedy. It stars Billy Bob Dorn as a, um, a thief and a drunk. He dressed up in Santa Claus to rob stores or whatever. And in the sequel, he has to team up with his mom who is played by Kathy Bates, who looks younger than him, actually, to rob a charity. And Christina Hendricks uh, is in it, uh, in this movie as well. The first movie had a 12 million opening and went on to make 60 million at the domestic box office uh, and 16 million overseas because, hey, you know, comedies don't usually travel well. And it probably did quite well on home video. And they've been making, trying to make a Bad Santa sequel for a long time. And they finally did. I don't know, this could do really well or it could do poorly because of the time. If you look at the trailer, it's all these people. Billy Bob Dorn, Kathy Bates and others with all these bad language, etc. making fun of people and there's this plot to steal money from this charity. And it's a holiday themed movie. Bad Santa 2. It's gonna do 10 million 3 days, 15 to 20 million 5 days. People want to have a good time a laugh at adults behaving badly then Bad Santa 2 is it and it's, it's different it's a, a true counter programming to all these big <laughs> uh, blockbusters like Moana, Fantastic Beasts etc. It's 30% at Rotten Tomatoes at the moment I don't think reviews are going to improve that much maybe up or down by 5% so who knows right I mean people might not want to watch the sequel but then again, like I say, you know, already comedies uh, during holidays, people who are looking for an edgier experience might want to go for Bad Santa 2. Okay, let's move on to uh, Allied. That movie takes place during World War II. It stars Brad Pitt, Marion Cotillard, directed by Robert Zomenskis. Pitt plays a uh, British intelligence agent. Uh, Cotillard played a uh, French resistance fighter. Um, they met up at an operation, you know, they fell in love, went back to Britain, started a family, had a kid, and then Pitt's higher up said that she could be a German spy. And they're pressuring Pitt, or Pitt's character, to um, kill his wife because she's a spy, she could be a spy, potential spy. Pitt is torn between these two forces, his love and belief that uh, his wife is innocent, and then the higher ups, you know, his employers. So, uh, and he set out to prove that she is innocent, really. And that's the thing right there. And this movie has kind of like the backdrop of a uh, rumor saying that Cotillard might be uh, a reason for Brad Pitt splitting from uh, Angelina Jolie. But hey, I don't believe it. That's something else. But who knows? You know, Gossip Magazine still uh, say anything to sell papers. Um, so, I don't know. I don't see this movie uh, ha has a big opening 
It's 60% on Rotten Tomatoes right now, and I don't think people are looking for a, a big, um, you know, World War II thriller, romantic thriller <laughs> during the holidays, even though it has Brad Pitt and Cody Lard. By Brad Pitt's name alone, it probably could do um, about 10 million, I think. I think it could do more, but I'm, I'm betting on 10 million because I think people are going to watch Moana. They're going to do Bat Santa too. Um, and then the other, like Fantastic Beasts, right? Doctor Strange, those people, people are still catching up on. And I think, I, and I don't think Ally is that big of a, a movie. I don't think it's that big of a must see um, to pull people from the other movies. Uh, so 10 million, three days, 15 million, five days. All right. And then finally, we get to. Rules Don't Apply is the uh, Warren Beatty movie starring a lot of big names from the past. Uh, it stars Lily Collins. Warren Beatty directed, wrote, and stars in it as well. He plays Howard Hughes. You know, there's Matthew Broderick, Martin Sheen, Alec Baldwin, Head Harris, Beatty's uh, wife, Annette Benning, you know, Oliver Platt, uh, Cadiz Bergen, on and on and on and on. You know, it's pretty much Beatty called in some favors, called in his friends to star in this movie. And it's, it's a period drama comedy. I don't know, unless you want to st go stargazing. I don't think this movie is going to be that big. It's an insider movie, sort of. <laughs> it has a Hail Caesar feel to me. The movie directed by the Coen brothers and stars George Clooney. That movie had a 11 million opening and a 30 million domestic growth. So I don't see a huge draw for this movie. This is a movie for people who are... Uh, who are into movies, right? But and as we know from previous insider movies about Hollywood, etc., that those those movies don't really usually connect with the general audience. Hail Caesar has George Clooney uh, starring, leading the cast, and that one only had a 11 million opening and 30 million domestic. This one has Lily Collin. Warren Beatty is past his prime, sorry to say. And then there's uh, Elden Ren Reich. <laughs> Uh, co-lead right so you know I don't I think this movie is gonna do f 5 million I, I think it's gonna open to 5 million 5 million three days 7 million five days how about that because of other movies in theater they're, they're stuffing uh, the theater studios are stuffing the movie uh, the theaters with uh, all these movies uh, lots of choices which is good for the audience lots of choices to see but for studios who are willing to make uh, want to make money in the theaters uh, it's not looking good for rules don't apply or for allied because during the holidays people want to get together and uh, maybe even we'll catch a few movies together and the bigger more uh more well advertised movie i, I guess uh it's probably gonna get dibs on the audiences this holiday season all right that's it for now that's it for this podcast uh, i'll catch up with you next week and see how i did thanks for listening bye bye